TMJ4 News is celebrating Black History Month. If you drive through downtown Grafton, you'll find the home of a legendary music label nearly lost to time. Paramount Records produced music by black artists in the 20s and 30s. Its influence can still be heard today. It may not look like much to someone passing by, but a unique part of Wisconsin history can be traced back to this now empty plot of land in Ozaki County. Well, uh, it was a um, little known secret that we even had this in our backyard uh, back in early 20s to uh, our 30s. <laughs> All that remains of this site next to the flowing Milwaukee River is a concrete foundation and a rusted power wheel, but pieces to a very important puzzle for Grafton historian Angie Mac Riley. A lot of that history was was left out, almost like it was a little footnote, when in reality it really shaped a lot of who we are. That history is a story of Paramount Records. It was a subsidiary of the New York Recording Laboratories which was a subsidiary of the Wisconsin Chair Company. The Wisconsin Chair Company, headquartered in Port Washington, made phonograph cabinets, and to drum up business, they came up with a unique marketing plan. Uh, they were included as a freebie in order to promote the sale of their furniture. Paramount Records made acoustic recordings of popular blues and jazz musicians. And they produced 25% of the nation's race records is what they called them. Um, basically, it was um, music by black musicians. Most of the records that they made were sold in cities like Chicago, Detroit, which had pretty significant uh, black populations at that time. Reggie Jackson is a Milwaukee black historian and talks about the importance of these records. Jazz music, blues music was really a way that, that people who performed in our community uh, really expressed their views about the world around them. Uh, and, and it's an important part of, of the way that we um, kind of showed our resilience uh, dealing with some very difficult times uh, in, in our music. The music styling of the first blues and jazz artists still have a hold on culture today. If you think of the, the recordings in Grafton as the center of this circle, um, people like Charlie Patton, uh, Skip James, Sunhouse, Ma Rainey, um, those recordings influenced other musicians like Johnny Lee Hooker and uh, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, and, and it just keeps going round and round and you get to Bob Dylan and you get to Led Zeppelin. Locally, uh, a lot of people don't understand that the music that we turn on the, mu uh, turn on the radio to listen to uh, was directly influenced by the recordings that were made by Paramount Records in southeastern Wisconsin. Historians say 1,600 songs were recorded during that time at Paramount Records. This is the uh, uh, the precursor to a lot of rock and roll music, and everyone, you know, I think relates to that. But how did it come about? This is where it started. Paramount Records, a unique part of Wisconsin's Black history and American history, something that can be treasured and shared for generations to come. And you can learn more about how Grafton is celebrating Paramount Records at tmj4.com slash black history.